program. What you talking about? The program. The program. Get with the program. Everybody clap to this. Say what? Get with the program. It starts now. Now. Welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Get With The Program Radio Show is a multicultural and with a combination of guest interviews with questions and comments. And we will act as a positive source of information. Now, today we will be joined in the studio with Sag Works and Inmates Entrepreneurs CEO Brian Hamilton and the Director of Community Relations, Ms. Jackie Parker. And we will be talking about transforming inmates to entrepreneurs with a mission to assist formerly incarcerated individuals in starting their own business and engaging in entrepreneurship by providing resources, mentorship, and hope. That's going to be a quite interesting conversation. I'm looking forward to that very much so. Today we are in the studio with Sagworks and Inmates Entrepreneurs, uh, uh, CEO Brian Hamilton and the Director of Community Relations, Ms. Jackie Parker. And we will be talking about transforming inmates to entrepreneurs. Amazing. With the mission to assist formerly incarcerated individuals in starting their own businesses and engaging in entrepreneurship by providing resources and mentorship. So once again, welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. Brian and Jackie, pleasure to have you here. Great to, good be, to be here. here. Yeah. All right, good, good. And, uh, you know, this is, um, this is going to be an interesting show. Now, Brian, you are the, um, you are the chairman and the founder of Sagworks, right? Tell me about Sagworks. Uh, we're a, uh, Gary, it's great to be here, by the way. I'm so excited about it. But um, we're basically a software and financial information company located in Raleigh. We started about 20 years ago. And, um, you know, we're right here in the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, are you also the original architect of the uh, artificial intelligence uh, technology platform that is used by thousands of financial institutions mm -hmm. and accounting firms. So how did, that, how did all that come about? Because this is big. Yeah, well, it's actually it's a great segue into sort of what we're going to be talking about today, which is helping small businesses. But what I noticed uh, for years, I, had, I was the 7J provider of the Minority Business Development Center uh, consultant in North Carolina for the SBA. I worked with a lot of small businesses. But what I, what I noticed, Gary, is that they are really good at running their companies, but they're not always good at understanding financial statements and financial data. So we developed an AI program to take financial numbers and convert those numbers into plain language so that people who are running their businesses would understand what's going on in their business from a financial perspective. Okay, so and you're also a, a, a guest on a CNBC and MSNBC yeah. and, and also a, a, con, uh, a contributor uh, to the uh, Entrepreneur Magazines. Yep. And that's one of my favorite magazines. <laughs> I, I actually subscribe to that. I get that monthly. Okay. So I, I love that. <laughs> And uh, so now, now, Brian, you're also uh, the founder of Inmates Entrepreneur Organization, and, and and tell me a little bit about that. Right. So I'm going to. Uh, so this goes back now 27 years. It's hard to believe. A good buddy of mine, Reverend Robert Harris, out of Oxford, uh, North Carolina, um, he was doing a lot of ministry work, uh, obviously as a minister at, at local prisons, and I was we were just buddies basically, and I started tagging along with him. And uh, during the breaks of sort of the faith-based ministry work he was doing, I would talk to uh, some of the inmates and, you know, ask them, hey, what are you going to do when you get out? Usually we would go to uh, minimum security prisons where people were about six months away from uh, kind of getting out into the community mm -hmm. and, get, and restarting. Sure. But I would ask them, hey, what are you going to do? And they'd say, well, I'm going to get a job. And I have to be honest, I mean, I don't know if it's biased, but... I was a little bit skeptical because, as everyone knows, it's hard enough to get a job, but if you've been incarcerated, it's even harder. And that was the genesis of the idea, which is let's take these guys and instead of them going to look for employment, let's help them start um, low capital service businesses for less than $500 and get them in the community, get them starting businesses, building wealth. Uh, maybe even hiring people as they mm. build their companies, maybe formerly incarcerated people as well. But this bit, this idea goes back about 27 years, and that's sort of the how I got started in it. That's pretty, that's pretty good. So in hiring them, you mean hiring them to come back to work for one of your organizations or work along with you? Yeah, the, the whole idea is that people who are have been in prison mm -hmm. are more likely to hire people who have been in prison. 
and there's not a lot of advocates for people, as you know, who have been in prison. Um, the idea of our society is based upon a second chance. If you do a crime, you know, you got to do the time. But when you get out, we want to reboot you and get you started. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter, especially with the Internet right now, is that there's a bias against people who have been incarcerated. And so what we're trying to do at Inmates to Entrepreneurs is, is say, look, when you get out of prison, rather than go and try to get a job, we're going to help you start your own business and, uh, you know, kind of reboot your whole life. And that, that's why we started, because we know, as you know, the, the rate of people going back to prison once they got out, get out is still too high. In North Carolina, it's about 67%. So, wow. I, yeah, which is terrible. And, and by the way, that's actually uh, better than the national average. But there's just too many people getting out who can't get back into society, so they end up going back to prison. And we think one of the reasons is that it's hard for them to be, reboot Gary in a society that still has a uh, systemic bias uh, and prejudice against people who have been in prison. So it's, it's almost like it's a cycle. When, right. when someone gets out, they can't find work, they can't find a job, so then they uh, uh, ultimately at some point go back to, to, to the crime or what they were doing and get right. reincarcerated back in prison it, again. Exactly. My dad used to say that idle time is the devil's playground. Uh, yes, I, I never that. knew what that meant right until I got older, but right, they get out, they can't get work, mm -hmm. so maybe they start drifting back into some habits or hanging out with the wrong reference groups. Our point is let's get them out, let's get them actively employed in society starting their own businesses, they can build their own wealth. Maybe as they build their companies, they can also hire formerly incarcerated people mm. to reverse the cycle. And this has become, over the last 20 years, it's become a huge national problem. I don't know if you watched the movie 13, and there's all these movies around. What do we do with the fact, Gary, that there's three million people incarcerated in the U.S., there's another five million on parole. How do we get them to be productive? We de nobody, no, ma no matter uh, black, white, Republican, Democrat, wealthy, not so wealthy, nobody wants these people back in prison, but what are we doing a, as a society to help them get back on their feet again and give them a, tree, a true uh, reboot? Now, especially, by the way, one other thing on that point, sure. mm -hmm. especially with the internet, there's a lot of great things to the internet. I'm not anti-technology, I'm in it. Right. But the truth is now, uh, you go and you type Brian Hamilton, Jacqueline Parker, uh, you type your name in there, mm -hmm. you Google it, and now all of a sudden, anything that you've ever done in your all life, it, right. it, it comes, comes up. up. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now we're having even more discrimination against people who have uh, been in prison mm. because people can find out what they did on the Internet. And uh, to us, it's not just not fair. But how are we helping our society to get these 8 million people rebooted in their life and to get restarted? So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're very passionate about it. By the way, most of our mentors are formerly, uh, have formerly been in prison. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of passion around sort of not our movement, but around our cause. So this is pretty much hands-on experience. That's, oh, what yeah. we're, that's what we're dealing with. Now, now another thing when we had talked about uh, the prisons, uh, I find that some of the prisons, this is a prison's a profit. I mean, they're getting right. paid by yeah. the state in different places. So right. I, I would take it, this is just my personal feeling, right. that they're in it for profit. So they like this cycle. Sometimes they may like this cycle going on because they're making money for the state, yeah. which is bad on the person that's going to prison. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, this is an incredibly good question. Yes. I often wonder, I just ended up there because I was hanging out with my friend, Reverend Harris, mm -hmm. doing, he was doing ministry. He's just my buddy. I was just tagging along. Do you know what I really think the, the issue is? I think the real issue is that not many Americans have been in a prison. See, I can't experience Vietnam. I wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. I can't experience being an African American. I'm not black. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can't experience being Irish Catholic from Connecticut. You know, and we just can't do that. We can, we can try to do that. Mm -hmm. So here's the real issue. Not many people have been in prison. They, so they don't understand that there's a whole world out there that exists outside of them. So if we had more people visiting prisons, if we had more people who had relatives there, there'd be more empathy for these people. Mm -hmm. So my point is that I think the real issue is that until you live something, you don't know it. And right. so we just, as, as a society, we just sort of put up with this. But here's my argument. Sure. It's not just a, 
a do-gooder argument, you know, because I, I love the people in our group. I, I love do-gooders, people who want to make things better, right? Mm -hmm. My argument is this, that not only is it not good for society, not only is it not good for the people in prison, but think about the cost, like you just said. Think about how much money taxpayers are paying every year to support 8 million people in the U.S. who are incarcerated, who can't be out uh, starting businesses or having jobs and paying taxes. So it's not just a societal cost in terms of, uh, you know, hurting people, mm -hmm. but there's also a financial cost as well. Right. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's the taxpayer's money. That's the taxes. Right, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Now, now, Jackie, yes. Jackie Parker, you are the director of community relations. How did you get involved with this organization? I work for NC State, um, and I help students create socially responsible businesses. So everything from a traditional C corporation that has some kind of do-good aspect to a traditional non-for-profit or non-profit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I found this position. It seemed like a great fit. I was passionate about the cause as well as had the background in both entrepreneurship and non-profits. Okay. And how, how did you two meet? I mean, how did, you, how did this come, come together? Yeah. How did, how did that happen? How did that <laughs> Jackie Poliso. But... Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll blame her. her. Right. Yeah, so I um, came on board in January, and it's been great. This is a large part of my job. and yeah. it's we, we basically advertised. What was happening, Gary, was we were, uh, we're doing okay, but we didn't have a dedicated person to drive the whole thing. Remember, we're total volunteer. We don't take money from anybody. We've never taken a dollar from any anybody, no mm -hmm. grants, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So all of our mentors are running businesses. They're business people. Most of them, the vast majority, have been in prison before. But the point is this. Because they're running businesses, we didn't have somebody driving the whole organization, which is why we brought Jackie on. She's done a great job. Now, once, these, once the people that uh, come into your organization and go through the program and they finish and they become successful, do they continue to be a part of the program? Do they become mentors or do they give back to the program? Yeah, we've, we've, had, a, we've had some of that. It's kind of interesting. Um, the people who come in and are mentors are usually, well, not usually, always now. One of our main, requir our main requirements is they have to be running a company. They really know, they need to know what it's like to be running a company. Mm -hmm. So um, we've had people, I guess Scott would be an example. Mm -hmm. Scott's I mean, a great full circle example. So he was one in one of our first courses in a correctional institution, came out, was mentored by the program, now runs a very successful business, has employees, and is a mentor. So he's the prom full circle example. Mm -hmm. um, but people continue to engage in all different ways depending on what works for them. So there's many success stories. So basically what we're hearing is that uh, just because you've been locked up in, in prison and got out, it's not the end of the world. Right. Exactly. That, you know, it's not the end of the world. So what is the process for an inmate to get involved? How do, how does, once they get out of prison, what is the process? Definitely. So we're running our first iteration of an eight-week course starting this coming Wednesday. I mean, that there's a really short application process, so they can reach out to me, or a lot of times there is a middleman, so they'll reach out to another nonprofit who refers them to me. I mean, I'll help them through that application process, and then as long as they w have a criminal background and have a true interest in starting a business, we're happy to enroll them in our course, which is totally free for them. I um, mean, also, they can be mentored by the program, be matched with a mentor. I do some one-on-one -on -one counseling with people. So depending on where they're at and where their capacity is at this point, we're happy to take them on. Okay, so now, are, are we talking about active inmates uh, and inactive inmates? Are we talking about the ones? Are we talking about the ones that, that get out of prison, yeah, or the question. ones that are, are? Do they? Are they? Can they get in contact with you before they get out of prison? And also, are, are you connected with the prison system to know who's getting out? Right. That's a great, you want yeah, to take I that? I could take that one. Sure. Yeah, the short answer is yes. So we work with them both while they're currently incarcerated mm -hmm. as well as when they get out. So in prison, we're happy to run two-hour one-shot courses. A lot of people ask us, well, why don't you do a follow-on? Unfortunately, we can never get that same group again. So that group of 15 people, were, if we come back three months later, they're not going to be at that same institution. Yeah, by the way, that's an important point, actually. Mm -hmm. So for years, the method of delivery was we would send – people like me out to the prisons, many of them, uh, in North Carolina, and we would speak two or three hours on how to start a business, what goes into it, blah, blah, blah. We would make connections there, Gary, but what we found was the courses in the prisons are helpful, but what people really need is one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Mm -hmm. So about a year ago, 
we really started to build up our mentoring, uh, the mentoring portion of our program. So that's kind of how we want to roll in the future. We still do courses, by mm -hmm. the way. If anybody Definitely. is listening in your audience, if you are affiliated with any of the prisons in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, we will go out. We will do a course. We have very good speakers. But really, we got to get them right before they're going to be released. And we got to get them right after the release so that we can bring them through our course and hook them up with a mentor. So that's that's wonderful to know. So the process actually can start yes. before they get out of prison. Right. Absolutely. Right. And yes. a lot of times they'll write to us after the course and run business plans by us. And we'll send them letters and articles and material while they're still incarcerated. Hmm. So are, are there any kind of requirements pertaining to age? You, do you also deal with um uh, juveniles or just you just deal with um, yeah. well, it's a great uh, yeah it really is so I don't want to get too much of a soapbox but we deal with people uh, who are 18 and older men women as long as you have been incarcerated and you are serious mm -hmm. about starting a business or you're running a business already and you want to help um, scale I do want to dip into one thing though sure. without I don't want to go I don't want to go too far down this but you brought up a really good point. I wish that we could get people earlier in their lives, like in middle school. Like, I mean, if you talk to AJ or Scott, you talk to most of our mentors. They were running businesses their whole life. Mm -hmm. I was. I started when I was in like middle school. Uh, I wish we would get the kids early so they would know a little bit more about entrepreneurship, so that they have options outside of just going to college and following the, you know, the regular program because. College is great, but it's not for everybody. And I, I always think it, as a society, if we got people when they were a little bit younger, uh, maybe they wouldn't take paths that are not so good for them. Mm -hmm. Right, absolutely. Now, what population do you have the most? Uh, and when we're talking about race, based on race, uh, uh, you have the African-American or the white, uh, yeah. the Hispanic. Which population do you deal with the most? E everybody. everybody. But, but, well, you, but, you know, we'll just be straight about it. I mean, we deal, of course, anybody. We don't care. Men, women, black, white, uh, Latino. It doesn't really matter to us. Mm -hmm. We just want to help people start businesses. But as you know, in uh, North Carolina, Unfortunately, the balance uh, of the prison population tends to be black still. Mm -hmm. um, so, but we deal with everybody, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's good information, though, and I think a lot of listeners kind of kind of are very much aware of that. So, how do you deal with? Uh, some of the mental issues because yeah, we know that um, uh, some people that uh, be incarcerated they they go through a lot of different mental issues such as uh, uh, PTSD uh, due to the lifestyle of being incarcerated when they get out how how do you deal with that do yeah. they go through some kind uh, of counseling program yeah I wish you didn't ask that one because it's so such a penetrating question and it's so important mm -hmm. um, well I've learned a lot you know I've started businesses I've worked with uh, now you know hundreds of inmates and all this but the let me answer the question. I'll give you sure. some background. Absolutely. Um, there, there's uh, not I say mental issues. I don't know how. To, there's anxiety issues. There's uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. There's uh, depression. There's, there's, there's. So the way the, the way we got to deal with that is hand-to-hand -hand combat. We need to hook up people who want to start a business with a person, very much like uh, the AA program, where you have somebody you can call you. And that was a missing element for us for years, and that's the way we deal with it. We are not trained counselors. You know, we don't have psychologists on staff, so on and so forth. But the reason your point is a good point mm -hmm. is because when you're dealing with people getting out of prison, you're not just dealing with economic scarcity. You're also dealing with social scarcity. Uh, uh, scarcity. People maybe have run off their families. You know, mm -hmm. maybe they're uh, depressed. And so the only way we can deal with that really is – Get them hooked up with somebody who's been there and done it, done that, who really understands what they're going through and can, who can help baby step them to get them moving. Because, like, you know, it's like a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first mile, right? You've got to really get them early. And that's the way we deal with them. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Brian hit the nail on the head. A lot of it is in having people. I think it's so important, and that really sets us aside from other programs, is having people who have been incarcerated mentoring individuals mm -hmm. because they can give some firsthand experience that Brian and I couldn't give and other programs sometimes can't give. So mm -hmm. I think that really does set us apart, and that's sometimes the best thing is them having someone to be accountable to. And also people, Gary, too, who – People who have been exactly where they are, mm -hmm. right, who have had no money, maybe they've run off their family, the family's gotten discouraged with them, they might have had drug, alcohol abuse. I mean, we all 
are creatures of problems. We all have that. Mm -hmm. But pe we have people who have been there and done that, who can relate to them, and that's what they need. And I, and I realized that was a deficit probably a couple of years ago because before a couple of years ago, it was really just going out and talking to the inmates. Mm -hmm. But you really need somebody who really understands what some of the people are going through. Because it's, it's, it, like, it's almost like a different language. You it have is. to put somebody that understands yes. that has been through it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, it's a and, you, and like you say, you're not dealing with just financial scarcity. Like when I was coming up, mm -hmm. we had financial scarcity. Probably there's a lot of people poorer than I was. There's probably a lot of people I know much wealthier. But, you know, uh, I had a lot of mentoring from my father. I had a, I had a, I had a decent support system. A lot of the people in prisons don't have that support system or maybe they've even lost that support system because they've gone through problems in life, whatever. But to get we got to get them with people who have been there. Mm -hmm. And that is key. And what's so nice, I mean, because it's a heavy subject, you know, mm -hmm. Yes, it is. but it is a really heavy subject. But to lighten it up a little bit, what is beautiful and it is really beautiful as how how embraced we are in the community. Um, throughout the community, small business people, wealthy people, people who have never been in a prison, mm -hmm. people who have been in a prison. But it's a beautiful thing to see people. This is what I always say to people. Sure. If you, on a journey of entrepreneurship, there are very common experiences, whether you've been in prison or you haven't been. But what we've been, what we are really happy about is that people relate to this. They understand the inherent need for this in our society, it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your uh, religious beliefs or even political beliefs. People relate to it, so it's really nice that we're getting so much support. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a I had a, uh, a person that I knew some years ago. He had mentioned a comment to me. He says, "No matter because you, you mentioned uh, no matter what religion, no matter what political background you're from." He mentioned to me. He says, "It doesn't matter who you are or where mm -hmm. you're from or what you've done." He says, "Anybody can go to prison." Absolutely. You can be one of the best <clears throat> people in the world and have a bad day and go to prison. It doesn't mean it's because that you've been to prison that you can't get back out and get back on track again. Yeah, well, we are. Well, now you got your look. You're giving me goose pimples here because it is such a powerful thing. The first prison I went to is Orange County Correctional in 1990, mm -hmm. and here's the amazing thing: sure. you talk to these people and you're like, "Holy crow." That could be me. That seriously could be me. Mm -hmm. um, no doubt about it. Now, that sounds patronizing, but that is absolutely true. And you realize the distance between you and the next guy, we all want to think we're better, right? It's an ego mm -hmm. thing. We want to think we're better, and somehow we've made all these right choices. But the distance is very thin. And also, we live in a second-chance society. That's what America's made. America is made on the second chance, that you can make a mistake and that you can move forward. Mm -hmm. And that is very important for people to remember that. Number one, there's not as much distance between you and the next guy. Absolutely. Usually most of us have had been blessed. To, maybe we had a good mom. Maybe we had a good dad. Maybe we had a good uncle. Maybe we ha have had good formative influences. Other people in our society have not had those. But even if they did, everyone in this country, if you make a mistake, you're still entitled to the second chance. That's what <laughs> Reverend Harris used to talk about all the time. He used to give his second chance sermon, you know, when I used to go to his mm -hmm. services on Sunday. We all deserve that second chance. And there used to be a program, I remember, it was a second chance program. Now, in case you're just joining in on the show today, we are in the studio with Sag Works and Inmates to Entrepreneur CEO Brian Hamilton and the Director of Community Relations, Ms. Jackie Parker. And we're talking about transforming inmates to entrepreneurs transforming in makes to entrepreneurs and we're going to continue this conversation but we'll be right back after this message Get with the program. what you talking about the program Welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. Again, I'm your host, Gary Jones. And as I said before, we're in the studio with Brian Hamilton and Ms. Jackie Parker. And there are Sag Works and Inmates to Entrepreneurs. I mean, we're talking about transforming inmates to entrepreneurs. And I know 
everybody, most everybody in, in somebody's family somewhere has somebody that has been in jail, been locked up or been in prison. Uh, so it, this is a good conversation that we're having with them today. Once again, welcome back to the show. Now, uh, Brian or uh, Jackie, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face with the inmates that come to seek entrepreneurship? What are some of the biggest challenges as far as keeping them there, what, what they're going through? What are some of your biggest challenges? Well, I'll start with some basic ones, Gary, and then we'll sort of build, build up from there. The first one, obviously, is capital, which is why our whole program is built on starting a business with less than $300. Every mentor mm. that we have, including me, we've all started with zero capital. And, uh, you know, we can get into the details of that. But basically, uh, people come to us, very few people have capital, financial capital. Uh, that's a basic. Um, and that's a big problem starting a business. It is. You got to have money with $300. We're talking about $300. $300. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got you to gotta learn how to bootstrap. You got to mm. learn how to start a business with very little capital, some flyers, maybe a little website going door to door. These are landscaping businesses, cleaning businesses, uh, uh, car detailing businesses. We've got tons of different businesses. Uh, and basically, but you got to start small with a, uh, a very low capital business. But I would say financial constraints uh, are big. There's no mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. But the biggest one, and this is something that, um, you know, I, I don't. It's really hard when you talk about inmates. You we got to be really careful to not be patronizing, right? You don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to be patronizing with anybody, but you don't want to be patronizing with people. But I will tell you that it's usually a problem of the mind and the way they think. Meaning, uh, either they think they can't do it, they've been beaten down by life. Maybe they're obviously a little, little discouraged. They don't know how to do it, um, and often, not always, not always, but often. Um, some of the folks don't see a relationship between the work they've done in their life and results. So we try to get them some early success quickly so they know that by putting a little bit of work and doing it the right way, they can get some positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. And not true for everyone, but in my personal experience, unfortunately, a lot of these folks haven't had a lot of positive encouragement or not even encouragement, they haven't seen a, a relationship between what they're doing and what their outcomes are in life. And so that's the biggest one right there. And that's why we developed the course too, by the way, where they can get, they can go eight weeks, there's no cost. It's all volunteer, you go through, and then you get something at the end of that, like I finished this course. But to get small, you want to get big wins, mm -hmm. then you got to get small wins first. So that, that's a good point, and I'm glad you brought that. Let's start. Let's start from the beginning, okay? Because I want to uh, let's get let's get the information. How does someone get in contact with you? What's the website? And then so the website is inmates to entrepreneurs dot org, um, and then my email and contact information is all on there. If they email me directly, whatever they need, I'm happy to respond and get them all the information. So they it's need. inmates to entrepreneurs dot org dot org. If, yep. yeah, by the way, if you could spell that, then you're right. Really <laughs> <laughs> you need a new or, name, <laughs> right? Or if you just like Google search inmates to entrepreneurs, where the yeah, first we're result. Right Result and it'll you know tell you the spelling and everything. Just put the E N T R. Google will fill in the rest. Yeah. That is tricky because I have a problem sometimes spelling that word myself. So <laughs> now the process. So tell me about the process when some how this whole thing goes down. Mm -hmm. Say say let's let's role play. I'm just getting out of prison and I'm I'm looking now. So all of a sudden I go to the website and I call this number. What okay, happens? Okay, you get me. Um, and I either if you wish to sign up for the course, there's a really easy ten question form to fill out. Just what cut type of business you want to start, so we know a little bit about you, making sure you're actually interested in starting a business. If you have a criminal background, um, and filling out that form, I will get in contact with the person. Say you know congratulations, you been enrolled we're so excited to have you some of them have met with me before the course started so they can get like kind of a head start and a jump start get some resources course packs um, anything like that or let's say they contact me and say hey I'm not ready to sign up for the course but I want to meet with you and just learn more about the program I'm happy to do that as well I'll come to them if I need to so. okay so that's sort of like the registration process absolutely so once they're registered and mm -hmm. they and they and they meet with you mm -hmm. 
okay, what's next after that? They meet with you, so then is there is a classes? I mean, what do, what do we do now? Right, so if they're enrolled in the course, the course is once a week for eight weeks. So it's eight a weeks course, okay. Eight week course, once a week at Wednesday night, six to eight. So mm-hmm. it's a big time commitment, but not so big that you can't work during the course or can't do other things. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a set time frame. If they're just meeting with me, I set goals for them until we use the metric most of the time that if they once they get their first customer, I will match them with a mentor. Because mm-hmm. we know at that point they're pretty serious, they got some momentum going, and they need that more one-on-one personalized attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if they don't have a customer, as long as they go to that course, then, I mean, just to be straight mm-hmm. about it, we just want to make sure they're for real because, mm-hmm. in other words, they're serious about it because obviously all the mentors are full-time business people. Mm-hmm. And we don't need, we don't want money, we don't want anything like that. But either go to the course and finish that, that means you know, you're for real, or or you go out and get your first customer, and then we immediately match them with, with, with a mentor. Mm-hmm. So once they once they come in, so how what what happens in um, in um, once they take the course mm-hmm. and they for some reason don't participate or don't come back or something like that? Do you continue to try to reach out at them? You continue to try to influence them to come back? No, that's a good question. We don't do that. It's a great question. Because there's other people that want this opportunity. You keep it moving. Yeah, and by the way, that's another place where there's a lot of opportunity here to be patronizing. I want to avoid every one of them. We, we, I've taught courses at Chambers of Commerce, at leading business schools, at, I mean, rotaries, and I mean, all small business centers all over. I began my career that way. Mm -hmm. So, on the whole, are you serious thing? It's not just for people who have been in prison. There's a lot of people who want to start businesses. We just need to get a little bit of a little bit of th- energy going there from them, so we know they're for real. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter that they've been in prison. I've taught courses like this all over the place, and you just want to know they're they're for real, so that when we match them with a mentor, we're not wasting the mentor's time. And that you know something's going right. To yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you answered the question. That was going to be one of my questions. Is this program just for inmates? Oh yeah, it's just oh, for inmates. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. inmates and this guy that's yeah, you in prison. You have to have some kind of criminal, some background. kind of criminal background. Mm-hmm. Okay, only for inmates. I'm sorry, I want to be clear. I've taught similar courses outside of the inmates mm-hmm. program. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if for this program, you you have to have been in in prison or or what's that mean? Or also have a, just a criminal background. A criminal charge. background. There's a lot of people, mm-hmm. at, you know, as you know, right. people who, they haven't been incarcerated, but they've got a criminal charge. Sure. Hmm, okay. And again, the program is, uh, you said it's free for the, for the inmates Absolutely that come free. in. It's, it's nothing, no charge. No charge at all. Okay, that's that's wonderful. So this, how do you survive? I mean, if the program is free, is this a, go, is this a, a funded program? Is this a nonprofit? Yeah, SageWorks fun, funds it. But, but, you know, I don't want that to sound... Uh, uh, I don't want that to sound too self-congratulatory because mm-hmm. here, here's the truth. All the people help out are, are volunteer. Mm-hmm. So we fund it, but, you know, the truth is that it's really the mentors that are providing the energy because they're working for free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they really deserve the uh, praise, not us. That's wonderful. How can an inmate uh, overcome fear? Because a, a lot of them, they, they, they get out and they... They're in a shell because I, I, I had a guy to tell me one time, and this is a true story. He, he told me that it's a relative of mine. He told me, he said, he said, Gary, I, I feel more free when I was locked up. He said, since I've gotten out into society, I'm afraid. Yeah. So how, how do you do that? How oh, do you man, overcome? We're going to need five hours for that one. <laughs> I, 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 look, I'm, four, I'm 54. Okay, mm-hmm. so I need, I'm going to answer this. Uh, and I get fired up about this because it, again, it, it's not just being in prison. It could be anybody. It could be anyone in society overcoming fear. How does that happen? The First of all, it's very hard because people have these preconceived notions that it's super hard. See, a guy like me, I've been doing it my whole life, so I know how to do it. Once you learn how to do it, it's not hard. But, you know, you got to jump in that pool. So here's what, I, here's what I've come to. Mm-hmm. When someone comes out, there's going to be that fear. It's not going to go away. It's like, you know, me asking Debbie Lenz out in high school for, you know, go out somewhere. It, how do you get over that? you got to do it. you got to jump in the pool. you got to ask the question. But if we can hook them up with a mentor, someone who's had that fear, someone who's been through that, that does help a little bit. But the question you're asking, I've been asking myself for 30 years, meaning why are people fearful? One of the, and this is going to be weird, but stay with me. One of the positive things 
about people who are coming from prison is a lot of them have hit bottom. So once you hit bottom, what are you afraid of? You know what I mean? You're on the cement. Where I have more of a problem, if I go teach this course over at Duke where I went to business school, mm -hmm. a lot of those people haven't had scarcity, they haven't had problems, they haven't hit the bottom. So they have more fear because they got more to lose. If someone comes out of prison, right, they've been on the floor. You know, they've had some That's problems. a good point. You have no way to go. If you're on the floor, you have no way to go else but up. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go? You're not going to go to China. So you're going to come up. And so one of the most exciting things is that you've been in prison. You've been through things I can't relate to, is probably, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've hit the bottom, so you only have, you know, you only have up to look forward to. And I, you know, I think in a way it's a positive. It's weirdly a positive thing, you know. Mm hmm and this is a one hour you said this is a one hour class it's a two, two hour a two, two hour hours. class yep. two, do you have do you ever have anybody that come in with physical disabilities inmates that come in oh. with physical disabilities we haven't run into that yet we're happy to try to accommodate but, that but that is like open a, some oh, yeah. They, yeah, they can, absolutely okay yeah, absolutely, uh, that's yeah. wonderful and education okay now we know some some uh, inmates go to prison that that, that hasn't um uh, has the, the requirements of high school diploma mm -hmm. You know, so how do you deal with that? Because now they, you got to have teach, you got to have classes to teach them maybe math, English, you know, different things. How do you deal with the educational yeah. part? Well, you know, let me, uh, I'm going to not answer it, then I'm going to answer it. Sure. One of the beautiful things about entrepreneurism, and I mean, you look at Irish American, Italian Americans, you look at African Americans, what's going on in society today. How do you get out of a social status and raise yourself up? In American history, there's one path, starting your own business. That's why we've got we've to feed that monster and we've got to make it happen throughout society. Um, because if you look at the history of America, the people who have been discriminated against in our society have found their way out by running their own businesses. And I'm, I want to answer your question directly. Though. Mm -hmm. Someone comes and knocks on my door and they want to cut my lawn. Mm -hmm. I don't ask them if they went to high school. I don't ask them if they went to college. Mm -hmm. I don't ask them who their father is and I don't ask them if they've been in prison. I say how much. And so my point about that is it's a bummer that you don't have a high school degree. We, of course we want everybody to have them, I get it. But it doesn't matter because you can cut my lawn. And that's the exciting thing about entrepreneurism in this country. And really it's the way we got to get out any discriminated group we got to get them out of that funnel through through being an entrepreneur. That is, I, I actually had goosebumps on my arms, and he was because if, if you was in the studio with me, listeners, you could actually see the expression and the feeling on Brian's face. But he is absolutely right because uh, a lot of times it, you don't. It doesn't have to have education or something to mm -hmm. to uh, to do a job. I mean, it's like he said, you got people doing landscaping. I can't do landscaping. I can if I have to, but that's not what I do. And uh, a gentleman can come in my yard and cut my grass, and he knows exactly how to trim it. So you're absolutely right, because I find that a lot of entrepreneurs uh, who, who are rich today, some of them don't have high school diplomas. They're not educated. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they, they step out there, as you mentioned before. They step out there on that bridge, and they walk to walk and talk to talk, and then they surround themselves around the resources mm -hmm. that make this ball turn. And that works. So you look at Reverend Harris. I don't want to call Reverend Harris the founder of Inmates, but... He's the, he's the genesis of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Reverend Harris comes out of uh, Creedmoor, North Carolina, grew up there. Um, and, um, I mean, I don't know. I think his, his grandfather was a slave. I don't know. He started with nothing, mm -hmm. zero. Mm -hmm. The guy uh, developed his own headstone company, monument company, you know, a great gravestone company. Made his own machines by hand, incredibly good with his hands, mm -hmm. no education, um, did it from ground zero, and he is not an exception. Most entrepreneurs start with very little money. Most entrepreneurs don't, well, a lot of entrepreneurs don't have an education. And so, uh, you know, and, and, I mean, you look at the history of our country, mm -hmm. whether it's Steve Jobs, Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, none of them were educated. So, amen, I hope this doesn't change. You know, in our country, you don't need an education. Not to say you shouldn't get one if someone's listening, right? That's the best path out. The best path out is to get educated and you don't have to be a sharp. But, you know, I'm goofing around. But 
but we don't need an education to be an entrepreneur. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that that is that you know that is that is absolutely true though because a lot of people are really uh, doing it without education, uh, and 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 you you would think that someone that has a master's or doctor degree and or a PhD that it puts them in a special bracket. But again, as we talked earlier in the show, even they can be incarcerated. Right. Don't be fooled. And then Absolutely. what, and then once they're yes. in prison, what does the education matter? Mm -hmm. You're on the same platform with everybody else now. So it's, it's not saying you shouldn't get your education. As right. you mentioned, mm -hmm. you, I mean, you should still do that. Now, as far as this organization, you mentioned the website. Now, I know Inmates Entrepreneur uh, provides a, a library of videos and other resources, mm -hmm. answer many of the most common questions people have on starting a business. Now, uh, those videos can be found on the site to start a business. Give me that site again. Yep. So it's inmates to entrepreneurs.org, and all the videos are up there, and it'll link to our YouTube channel where you can see there's 50 or 60 videos on starting a business. So if you can't make our class, don't want to meet with me, that's or you're somewhere else and mm -hmm. not in the Raleigh area, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. You can go and watch those videos and get that background yeah, that by way. By the way, one important thing, too. Sure. What we want to do is mm -hmm. reach every inmate in the country. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make the website the university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we keep adding more and more content and videos so that people throughout the U.S. can download those videos and watch them and share them so they don't need to come to our class. See, our mission is to reach every inmate not to build this just in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you, you can do a lot through the web. And so um, people can go to the website and download the stuff for free and share it with their friends. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's real good information. So now we only have a couple more minutes left. What would you want to say to my listeners about your organization? And, and, uh, and why would somebody really want to choose your organization more so than choosing someone else's that do the same type of uh, uh, functions? Yeah. I, I would say... Um, you know, it's hard to put it all in one thing, but this is what I would say, that uh, the distance between us in this room and the people in this society who have made mistakes is much thinner than you think. And none of us, nobody, is immune from making a mistake. So what are we going to do with 8 million people? We're going to just recycle them back into prison. It's going to end up costing us more money. It's terrible for them. Think of the human suffering. Understand that we only have 300 million people in this country. Mm -hmm. We've got 8 million of them affiliated with the prison system. This is an all of us problem, not a them problem. And that's what I would say. And that's what I'm, that's why we started the whole organization. Hmm, Jack? And I think, yeah, what makes us unique, as I said earlier, is that we have people who have been there and have been great examples and can be a great example. And they're there to support people. If they're serious, want to start a business, they're so happy and so driven to support them. So I think definitely reach out, go on the website, email me, and I'm happy to get you set up. Great. Now tell me one of your, either one of your, tell me one of your success stories, one of your success stories that you could say you really felt good, that touched you about uh, somebody that came to your organization. What is one of your well, success again, stories? Well, again, we... I know it's probably a lot of them. No, no, no. I want to get really super real about it. I, I, I want you talk about Scott. Like, I mean, he... You know, I mean, I've never seen anybody with so much energy and tanked up about life. Right. And, I mean, because he, I met Scott. Didn't I meet Scott? You in met prison? Scott, and yeah, that's mm -hmm. who we were talking about earlier. Yeah, he met Scott, and back in 2008, it was one of yeah, the first. Yeah, this is the guy we want to try to get on, let him tell his story, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, definitely, yeah. But he's, uh, you'll never shut him up. <laughs> that's a good thing because this is a talk show oh, that's a good God, thing forever. he'll probably listen to this listen I want him to listen to this I got, I got a goof on him right? but tell, no, tell a little bit about it so him. yeah as I said earlier so he has started a business um, it's called Fit Tech and Assembly um, and they go in and repair fitness equipment in gyms and he's expanded to North Carolina South Carolina has many employees will employ people with criminal backgrounds um, so he's wow. awesome yeah and he has he's one of our most engaged mentors always energized always calling me with new ideas um, so just seeing his passion makes me more passionate so uh, to my listeners there you have it particularly listeners who are who, who have records and and can't find work I think this will be a wonderful organization mm -hmm. to start with mm -hmm. uh, inmates to entrepreneurs I think you need to really 
pay attention to this and, and reach out to them because uh, it's, it's finding jobs with, with records. Because how do you feel about, okay, uh, on the applications yeah. when you go to these jobs mm -hmm. and, and the first thing you see on the application yeah. is uh, do you have a criminal record? And when you check that little box yeah, that's, that's, that says you're, you're done. done, you don't even mm -hmm. get a chance. You're done. Because I think they had a law that was supposed to do away with yeah. that, but I still find yeah. it on some applications. Yeah, President Obama wanted to do that. I, he might have done it for federal government employees. Mm -hmm. But, but the you know state. what? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. divert us into details too much. Mm -hmm. That's not the enemy. That's not good. Because to me, if you've, you're you out and you've done your time, that's over now. Right. That's why uh, God invented pencils with an eraser. Right? We erase that and we move forward. Mm -hmm. The real issue right now is Google and the Internet, Gary, that people can just type my name in and they can see my charge. And I, I really worry that the problem of incarceration is going to get larger because of the Internet. And I, because, mm. you know, any charge is going to come up on Google. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is really, uh, there's a lot of great things about the Internet, but I think that's right. a real downside. Because they have now where you can look at people's records, you can find out yeah. all types of stuff, stuff about, about people now. Let me just run a real quick Absolutely. story by you. You got it. A uh, girl, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm 54, so everybody's a girl under, under 30, right? <laughs> but she's 21 years old. She had a charge. She was in a Belks or something. She stole uh, like a 20, I, I know she stole a very small item from Belks. She got a charge. She never got prison time. She got that charge when she was like 16. Five, six years later, Gary, you Google her name and boom, it's right there. And she's a 21-year-old girl. For all the people who are listening, who are parents, mm -hmm. there's a lot of parents listening. I got kids. I got 21 and 23-year-old. Would you want your kid to have a charge against them hurting their ability to go to college or get a job for something they did when they were 15 or 16? Absolutely. You think yeah. that's fair? No, no, that is not fair. So with that being said, it's a good point. Uh, for both of you, do you think the, the justice system is fair? No. We, no. The, no. The, no the, the, well, you want to do this for three hours? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had, Come you on, know, you got to shut me up. I had to get that one in. I said because you're dealing with, you're dealing with mm -hmm. prisons, and I had to ask you, you think the justice system is fair for? And I, and I guess I'm asking that in correlation to race. Yeah. You no, think it's no. fair? No. You look at any of the numbers. It's it's not fair. People aren't equally represented. They don't have equal resources. That's just a fact. And unfortunately, I mean, you know, again, this is the way I look at it. I look at life as we are all ants carrying the bread. We got seven or eight ants. We got the little piece of bread on. We're all carrying it. What can we do in our lives as a little group of ants carrying that piece of bread? Mm -hmm. We just need to make a little bit of an impact. I, I always talk to the guys. Guys, we're not going to change the entire world. No one's going to do that. But we could take one inmate at a time, one piece of bread. That's right. We've done our thing. That's right. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, once again, we was in the studio today with Brian Hamilton and Jackie Parker talking about inmates and entrepreneurs transforming. We, they're actually transforming inmates, people that have records and can't find jobs. If you're coming in, you're serious about what you want to do. You, you sign up for the program. You go through the program. Who knows? The sky's the limit. Brian, anything you want to tell my listeners before we go? Are you Jackie? Love your neighbor. Get out and think of your neighbor as a human being, as somebody who maybe hasn't had all the advantages you, uh, that you've had. Be uh, blessed, too, and be happy with your life. Because we, I have to tell you, going mm -hmm. to some of these prisons, Gary, it's heavy. It's heavy. You go into the intermediate or, or, or the maximum security prison, it's a heavy thing. So be thankful. And remember, these are your neighbors. You know, We're, mm -hmm. we're all part of this race here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to repeat our website one last time for everyone, just so definitely reach out to us. We're more than happy to always take people and help. Or if you're a business owner and want to be a mentor, we're happy to talk to you about that as well. So it's inmates to entrepreneurs.org. Super long, but inmates to entrepreneurs.org. And when you, can't, when you can't spell that, call Gary. Hey, yeah, hey, call me. <laughs> and what, and what, no, what's the phone number? Okay, 984-242-2526. That's my office line, and I check it multiple times a day. Nine eight four two four two two five two six. Wow! So there you have it. Wonderful show. It was a blessing to have Brian Hamilton and Jackie Parker in the studio with us today. And we had a wonderful conversation about inmates and entrepreneurs. I'm looking forward to bringing them back. Actually, I'm going to make sure I, I'm going to keep up with y'all. I'm going to be watching y'all. I'm going to keep up with y'all. And once, I want to get one of your, your, uh, your 
uh, your people that has been through the program, your success Absolutely. stories. You want to get one of them in here because there's nothing like having someone that has actually been in prison to tell you the prison life. Because I has I actually had some guests on her before that has done that, but I want to bring one of your one of your uh, one of your uh, people in here once again. Thank you for joining us to get with the program radio show again. I am your host Gary Jones, and we always like to make sure that we have good conversations for the community. And um, I always got to tell you. This show today, I said before, is it inmates entrepreneurs. Just remember, always remember this, is that you're never too good to go to prison. Your life can change in the blink of an eye for a reason that you have no clue why that happened. So don't think you're better than somebody else. So when somebody gets out and get out of prison, please stop judging about what they've been through. If they can do the job and, they, and, they, and they're going to follow the rules and regulations, Give them a chance. Once again, thank you for listening to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. So until next time, take care of us and uh, be blessed. Hold up, hold up. Get With The Program. What you talking about? The Program. The Program. Get With The Program. Everybody clap to this. Now. Now.